we're going live. We're going live. We're going live. Um, thank you very much, everybody. Um, we are happy to be live. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. We thank you for Thank you, thank you, thank you. We we hope we we are sorry for all the inconveniences. Um, we hope you can hear us. If you're on Facebook, we we have had some challenges, but we we always overcome. We we are grateful to be here, and um, so if you have been waiting we apologize for all the inconveniences but we're going to we're going to do the best we can to manage the little time we have it's an unusual day and things happen but you have to be able to make the most of life's opportunities so thank you very much and person Gozi, you're welcome i hope you can hear me loud and clear um if um, they can help me make sure that all things are closed and people and they are, that we are set. We are set. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. We have our special guest today, um, Ihani and Oluchi John. Um, we will be introducing them in a moment, but I think maybe we we'll just, um, as my wife earlier suggested, want to invite them in, and then we're going to have to walk through all this together because it's been an unusual day. Um, some people, if you have been waiting and then um, this has happened, just click on the share button and share the link and invite friends and family. We hope we can be able to record this session. Let me make sure that we're able to record. Of course, um, we're live on Facebook. I, 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 I want to apologize for any inconveniences. Um, you will be joining me in a moment to welcome Ihani and Oluchi join all the way from Maputo, Mozambique. Um, please, um, can we have Ihani and Oluchi join, join us in the room now? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It's been, um, I, maybe, I think that um, it's very possible that Ihaye carries an apostolic grace because the kind of problem we have encountered today, we have never encountered before. Um, I'm a student of the Bible and I do not want to, I don't want to theorize and I don't want to be dramatic, but I find it interesting when I read the scriptures, when I find that um, when Paul will come to a place in Nigeria where I grew up, they use the word katakata, katakata. You know, <laughs> things will just happen. Um, life is spiritual. I don't want to preempt anything, but I think that whatever we plan to do today, we will do it in Jesus' mighty name. Um, yeah. We'll apologize to everybody. We're going to do it, even if we're exceeding our normal time, if they are going to sacrifice, because I know it's very late where they are, where we are prepared to make any sacrifice. We're very prepared. So I want to apologize um, ahead of time to say we're going to exceed the time, not because we're going to spend less, more than one hour, but because everything has gone the way it's gone. We are so excited to have Oluchi and them um, and Ihai e. John. Um, um, we've known them for so many years. I, I, I think that before we even talk about introducing them, maybe we have to go a bit of memory lane. I don't even know how our life's connected, but it's a connection that has... Um, been drawn across the globe because of the relationship we have with them. I've had to go to Maputo um, at least three times or three times, you know, um, and then um, they're a wonderful couple. We're glad they are here today. Uh, and whatever they have on their heart to share with us, we will hear it in Jesus' mighty name. We will hear it in, in Jesus' mighty name. Um, <laughs> I, I want to ask, um, for the benefit of those who are listening, do you remember how we first met? I don't remember. I know it's a story. What do you remember? I'm sure that between four of us, we can make it up without taking too much of the time of our hearers. Although she's always conferring with her husband and is making her business grow, no problems. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yes, do, you, do you, I remember? I remember bits and pieces. I remember 
you were pastors of Redeem Parish. I remember yes. he at some point was in transition in ministry and life. I remember yes. there was a question that bothered you as a couple once that you came to Lakey, yes. you came to our home um, when Joanna Pell was very, very young. Joanna Pell was born in 2005, so you can use her age. Yes. If you can remember how old she was when you came, you give you an idea. She was born <laughs> June 2005. Yes. So when you came, she was very, very young, maybe a few months old. So that can be a guide for you. But I know that there was, um, I know that, I know you invited us to do a, a couple seminar in your local church when you were pastors back in Nigeria. I know there was a transition moment in your life, um, both career, ministry, before you became expatriates and, and traveled abroad. Um, so I don't remember the beginning, but I know, I know that some of those events characterize it. Um, but we're happy to have you today. We're happy to have you today. Um, Pastor Ngozi, what do you say? I think we can just have a moment of prayer and um, and get into the mix and meat of it. What do, you, what do you have to say? Well, the first thing I have to say is thank you so much for your patience. We had a bit of glitch at the beginning, so we're really excited that you guys are here. You are a power couple doing amazing things, you know, like just blazing through the southern part of Africa and doing exploits. But before we even go in, I want to say a very big thank you. Last year when Pastor John turned 50, he happened to be in Mozambique with you guys. You guys were hosting him and you gave him a nice celebration with cakes and friends. And I just want to say a very big thank you to you. You guys are awesome. We love you and we appreciate you. Thank you wow. so much. Thank yeah, you. Thank we're excited you. that you're here with us today. Never mind the glitch, it's gonna be an awesome session. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much in Jesus' mighty name. It's Amen. Yes. Awesome session. <laughs> we are grateful to, to be in Jesus' name. I can't uh, hear them well. Did they, they, they say something earlier? They've not been saying much, but they just said okay. it has to be. I'm hearing him. He said it has to be, and then Oluchi laughed. Um, I don't. They haven't said much yet. I'm sure they are loaded and waiting. I, I think I'll take a moment. Um, I like to do this. What love works? Love works. What is love works all about? Before we get back to introducing our guests, um, I like to read some of the things that we wrote about love works. Um, we this was well, um, Pastor Ngozi coined this some years back. It says, you attend schools and train to excel in your career. You service your car regularly to ensure it keeps running without disappointments. You acquire skills and develop new products to satisfy customers and increase profit. Now, Loveworks provides you an opportunity to prepare for, invest in, build and sustain the most important relationship in your life or of your life. An opportunity to keep advancing successfully in the oldest institution of life, the school of marriage, the school of marriage. We thank God for the school of marriage. So Love Works, Love Works is a preparatory program, um, a preparatory program and training program, a preparatory and training program for singles and those in the early hours of your marriage. Today, we have our special guests all the way from Maputo, Mozambique. And uh, we've we'll tried to go memory lane. Maybe it will be covered in the session how we met, but we're happy to have them. Up. We've done, marriage seminars together over the years. They have invited us as guests. Um, and I think that um, I, my association with them or our association with them tells me that they carry burden for relationships um, because you know the kind of seminars and discussions we've had and what they've tried to do with young people, even in Mozambique, not just the fact they had a couple seminar back in Lagos so, so many years ago, tells me there's a similar burden. So let's um, say a big welcome to um, Ihai and Oluchi John, um, how are you doing, both of you? We're fine. Thank you, Pastor John, and uh, thank you, Pastor Ngozi. We want to say a big thank you for this opportunity, for inviting us on this, your amazing platform. Um, we have known Love Works for so many years, for so, more than a decade now, we've known Love Works. And um, we have been excited about it. And that was why the moment we had the slightest opportunity to, to share with the grace upon this ministry, we invited you both when we were involved in ministry in Nigeria and also here in Mozambique. 
I love the spirit behind it. I love, I love the heart you have for marriages. Mm -hmm. And I love the grace. The times I've lived with listening to you, it's been simply, simply amazing. So thank you so much for inviting us to this platform. We, we appreciate it. I think the first time we met was when we had a challenge and we came over to your house at Lakey Phase 1 mm -hmm. for That's some true. counsel. Yeah. Somebody referred us to you that we need to come to you. You're the right person to talk to. So we just located. And when, he, when the person mentioned you, I said, yes, I know him. I've, heard, I've, I've, I've attended apostles in the marketplace and I've listened to him speak. So I was quite excited coming over to your house and I told my wife, don't worry, this guy, he has something to tell us. And when we came, the wisdom that you gave us was, was quite amazing. We, we don't forget it till today. Actually, the thing, you, the, the thing you talked to us about actually ended up working out the way exactly. you advised that it should work mm -hmm. out. So I think that was the first time we met you as a couple. I don't know where Pastor Ngozi was then. I think she has been busy all over the whole world, all over her life. <laughs> no, she was jailing. Was she, baby? Angela, yeah, Angela travel. travel. <laughs> Angela, the travel. Exactly. Well, I, I, I think it depends on, on what time of day you came. Maybe in that era, maybe she was still working in Ikeja. Maybe she'd gone to work. I don't know. But I know that Jonathan was so young that she couldn't have been so far from the house. Um, and all that. But it's interesting. And so somebody might ask, how, why did you choose to invite the Johns to this session um, today? Well, we've had opportunity to work together for a number of years. I've been to Mozambique three times in the last several years, and I believe that's not exaggerated, three times, I believe so. Um, and in most of those sessions, we've either had um, sessions on relationships or we've talked about it so often that sometimes they're even saying, this is not a marriage seminar. This is business seven that we're discussing, you know. But I think that part of the reason why I believe that um, Pastor Ngozi and I decided to invite them is also because when we think about people to invite, we say, who has something to offer um, that is natural and also are willing to come on stage to share their life or their lives? Um, what my own observation. Um, having worked with them a little more closely than my wife has, even though my wife and I are partners, is that I think I enjoy the chemistry um, I see between um, um, Oluchi and Nihai um, in the sense that in my trip to Mozambique, the first trip I made, I was, how, I, was, um, I was put up in a hotel. And then they told me that they decided to make the investment that they would like to start housing their guests as part of their contribution to the kingdom of God, not because... Um, it wasn't just um, just a money saving thing. It was also an investment in hospitality because um, Oluchi herself said she had a burden to build something to be her own hotel. So let's put it that way. So so because of that, it means that my last two trips, I spent quite quality time with them because we were housed together, right? And I, I think I love I love the chemistry. Um, it's one of those marriage relationships where um, because Oluchi um, exhibits a kind of freedom that can only occur when your husband gives you the push, go ahead. You know, she'll be running her own business while I'm there. Or, you know, here he goes to work. During the day, she's running her own business, you know, with energy, you know, like an unoppressed woman, free. They have to tell us more about what they do themselves. Yeah, no, they will tell us more. But I'm just giving my own observation, which we have never discussed before, you know, but I, I thought I love the chemistry, you know, just the way they work together. Um, I even know, without embarrassing him, I know that he, he will show up during the middle of the day. So what do you say? Oh, I eat lunch at home every day. I come and do my lunch and I spend time. Oh my God. I engage my wife yeah, and I go back to the office, you know? <laughs> and it was interesting because I don't think it was because, I don't think he was incapable of doing office lunch and all that stuff. I mean, I know he's a, a very wise person, but I also think that it was one of those relationship building things also. That, in other words, there are so many dimensions to it, but. But I love all that. I saw the chemistry back and forth, and then of course with the children and so on and so forth. So we are happy to have them today. We would like them to tell us more about themselves. We have some leading questions, and um, so Pastor Ngozi would kind of lead us in some of those aspects. I'm here, but we want it to be as natural as possible. What's our objective in these sessions? We we interact with so many young people. Well, when I say young, by Nigerian definition, okay? So these are people in their 20s, mid-20s, approaching 30s, people in their early 30s, people even older. So what, let, me, I, let me use the word single rather than young, but they are really young. 
Um, and the objective of Love Works is to help them believe in the marriage institution, prepare for a marriage that will go the distance, and if possible, as they enter into the institution, avoid the pitfalls and the mistakes of those who have gone ahead of them have made so they don't repeat history. You know, so I hope that this session will be immensely beneficial to those people that are either listening live or who will listen to it as a recorded message. I know people have called in from South Africa, even them, um, you know, and Oluchi, um, they've already, they have followers and those people have, I mean, I've got some calls from, from Mozambique, from South Africa and other parts of the African continent. So I don't even know what groups they've advertised this in. The final thing I'll say before I hand over to Pastor Ngozi is that, so sometimes I struggle with um, knowing how to address them. Um, when I knew Ihani back in Nigeria, I was pastor of a, a church, a local church in a commission, in a mission. It was part of a, it was pa pa pastor of a parish, you know, in the redeemed mission and, and so on and so forth. And then, and I know he worked closely with his senior pastor at that time. Um, and then he became a branch pastor, a parish pastor to himself, with himself and his wife. They, they launched a new work and all that. So I always knew him as Pastor Ihani. Um, of course, he was always, from the first time I met him, his last name is John. So I was wondering, Pastor, are you Pastor John or Pastor Ihani? He said, Pastor Ihani, John, which is strange. Okay, I got used to that. Then we moved to Mozambique. And when I we relate, I said, Pastor Ihani, you say, I'm not a pastor. I don't pastor a church. I say, well, let me see what I see. So I saw him. So when I saw him, I, you know, this is a different topic, but he, he wasn't pastoring a local church by definition. But he was still pastoring when I met him. He was pastoring the full gospel. He's very active. He'll tell us more about himself. And I know that I have this sense, and, and I, don't, I don't want to use words carelessly, but I have this sense that he's, uh, they are sent to where they live. They are, they are sent once in Mozambique. Um, and, and you know that that's what's word sent is apostolic. You know, that's mean of the word being, you know, so I see him as a marketplace apostle. And of course, I see Oluchi as a marketplace apostle. Oluchi is very, I mean, he's a serial entrepreneur. I mean, She's doing, she's trying to do many things at the same time, you know, so, so I would be simple, I'll call them here and all Luchi, but because I believe life is not about titles, it's about functionality, it's about impact, so let's stay with impact and functionality and let's not get confused, so when I say that it's not because it's a titleless man, it's just because I want to stay with the substance in this our dialogue, so person goes over to you. <laughs> so thank you so much again here and all Luchi, I think the first thing is to really hear from two of you um, about your background. If you can just tell us about yourself a little bit to give context before we go into the marriage talk. Just tell us about yourself. How would you describe you and you know, your background and your training? First of all, I think Pastor John really talks, you know? <laughs> Pastor John really talks. <laughs> you think he's about to end and he starts another round. <laughs> For the gift okay, of well, <laughs> well, just to say that we are, we're actually about starting the, starting the guest lodge we told you about when, when you came. So next time you come to Maputo, you'll probably not be staying in our house. You'll probably be staying in the guest lodge. Fantastic. <laughs> so the Lord, is, the Lord is bringing it to pass. Um, yes, yeah, so um, you, Pastor Ngozi, you asked about our training, our background. Um, I call her Star Baby. Uh, Star Baby is, um, is a trained microbiologist, but doesn't practice it. <laughs> You know, the, the grace and the anointing for business took over, and she's now into all kinds of business, healthy food, everything healthy food, beauty stuff, um, fashion, um, hospitality, uh, what else? Dot, dot, dot. She's a serial entrepreneur, you know? Uh, I, I, then myself, by training, I am an electronics and computer engineer, but I've never practiced it. I, I, I've gone into banking because when I came out of school, banking was the real stuff if you wanted to survive financially. So I went into banking from banking. I entered telecommunication in 2003. And since then, I've been into telecommunications. Right now in Mozambique, I, 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 I am, I am, a, I am, I am a, a telecommunications consultant uh, where, I, where I work. And I, I consult on everything telecommunication, everything, because I have so many years of experience. And uh, I, I'm also into a couple of businesses. Basically, we do everything she does together, real estate and all that. 
Um, we, are, we, are, we are busy for the Lord here through the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship. Um, by the grace of God, we are part of the leadership and we've been on that since 2015. Um, I think that is, that is all that Pastor John has not shared. He, he has shared a lot, so this is just what he hasn't shared. <laughs> That is incredible. I mean, you guys are living, maximizing your potential, you know, leaving no stone untouched. And, I, and that's just wonderful and commendable. I think we, the next session we'll have, apart from this on relationship, is to tell us about what, how, what's driving you? How are you able to do things that you do? Because I know that many people want to break that barrier in terms of wealth creation, in terms of how you're working together as a couple, your business and how you're using your skills. So I'm sure that we'll have another session, you know, where you talk to us more about your business and your skills, your habits, what's making you successful. We really need to learn that from you. So th thank you again for being here with us today and for who you are. And I mean, it takes a lot of discipline um, and determination to achieve anything in life, a lot of courage, determination. I mean, you're in another country, not your own country, and you're literally taking over. You know, so well done. And we thank God for God's, for his grace on your life. So in terms of relationship, how did you meet? How did you meet her? You know, where did you meet? How what did you meet her? Her? I've been <laughs> talking, she needs to talk now. <laughs> she has a version, a version of our story. So let's hear. So in terms her. of how they met, which version do you want? Oluchi's version or Ihai's version? <laughs> I think her version is better for you. <laughs> and then when you also ask how they met, you also have to ask who met who. Oh. <laughs> yeah, because you know the way it is. Sometimes A meets B and B meets A. Sometimes B meets A and A didn't meet B. Please right. go ahead, on the chief. All right. Um, we went to the same uni. Okay. okay. Which is um, Futo. Futo. Hello. I said, which is Federal University of Technology or where? Yeah. Puto, Puto, yeah. Puto, yeah. Yeah. Back then, he used to be our um, fellowship president, right? Okay. Wow. We call Castle. Castle. Wow. Yes. Okay. Um, yes, I was a uh, two class below you, you right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I was just a normal member, you know? I don't even go all the time to the fellowship. Wow. But um, he, he was our president and um, nothing much. I had my friends around me. Okay. I wasn't consistent in the fellowship. Um, I had a relationship going on back then in uni. And so I could come a couple of times in the, at, the, at the castle fellowship. But all that, then he went out for his um, national youth service. And um, then he came, yeah, I, I think, no, he didn't go. He went. I went to pick my call he, up later. Yes, he came back to school to pick up his call up later. Yeah. Right. Um, and just that, I think I was in my hostel and I went down to the lawn to pick my wash clothes. And I heard, um, I was, yes, I had picked and I was going back to my room. And I just saw him coming up, you know on the staircase with some sisters, you know, sisters, they liked him so much. <laughs> you know, so they were just, you know, clamoring around him, praise it all, you know, so I just heard some, you know, sisters, some girls shouting and talking, and I looked at that when it was him, we greeted. No, we didn't get, you ran, she ran, <laughs> she ran to me. <laughs> I ran with the heart of a sister who saw a president. Not okay. just on anything. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I came, I was like, oh, praise the Lord. I helped him. Yeah. We all greeted, you know. And that was it. Then um, he saw me to my room and then he requested that we meet. And uh, the, the, there was something he asked, he wanted us to talk about. And um, in the discussion, we just talked. You know, we talked, we talked, and I took that opportunity to, to open up my heart to him, you know, be, um, concerning the challenge I was passing through because, you know, you're president. And I think from there, I don't know what happened. 
So he should continue this <laughs> All I did was to talk to him about my challenges as my <laughs> president. And I don't know what happened from his side. So he should continue. <laughs> so the discussion we had that night was purely, I mean, had nothing to do with any relationship. In none of, neither of us thought about relationship, you know? It was purely, I mean, I was a fellowship that day and I just came, I came to care for my sheep. So and she was part of the sheep, <laughs> she was part of the flock. So I counseled her, we prayed together and I left. Yeah, so that is how we met. Unless you want to know how did we now decide to marry each other, but how we met. No, no. So for how, you know, because she said she met in the midst of several sisters, other ladies. How did it eventually become two of you going to have a call? Okay. Talk? How, how did that eventually happen in the midst of that, you know? No, actually that night, it wasn't only, it wasn't only with her, you know, when you come around, everybody wants to talk to you. So right. apparently before I had, before I had come to meet her, I had talked with a lot of other people. Okay. So she, she only came in to fill up her turn. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! You know, and her yeah, tongue, so, her tongue so became was... special. No problems. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, so what eventually happened? You know. Okay. So interestingly, at that time was at a time when I was I had begun to pray seriously about who do I marry. I desired to get to to know the person while while in school while in school. It didn't happen. I had a list of sisters, of course. I had about three or four, a list of three or four ladies. I was, I was Lady. praying over. Them. Yes. Oh. I was, there were four of them. <laughs> Sorry? I didn't know that guys made lists too. <laughs> I had, a, of, if you have to prove up over ladies, then you have to write their names down in order of priority, in order of importance. So I was. <laughs> So while I had left school and I was at home waiting for my call up, I was already praying over those sisters and they uh, praying and seeking the Lord. You know, even when I went to, when I came to pick, I was, I, in fact, we just met at that time. So when I got home, from the time after that conversation and I got home, somehow, you know how God works, somehow the name stuck. So I added her to the list and she was the last <laughs> on the list, the last on the list. She was number five. And I began to pray. So I went for my youth service while I was in Quara State. Yes. I will always bring out the list and I will always pray. I say, Lord, who is it? I had my preferences. I had people that I didn't have much with her. You know, I didn't have much with her. But somehow she, she was bulldozing her way through. My mind, somehow I was, I was finding peace in her direction. <laughs> I was finding peace in her direction and... It began to get obvious that this was the person. I had to analyze everybody. I, for each name, I'll write all the analysis. For which name, I'll write all the analysis, and I will be bringing it before the Lord Father who it is. And then, somehow, I made the boldest step with her. I came, I came, I came back. I, I hadn't finished this service, but I came to visit campus, and um, I came to visit Oweri, and and I picked her up and. Um, and one thing led to the other, and I, you know, she visited, you visited my house. I invited her over because, I mean, being a good child like Pastor John, I didn't <laughs> ever, I didn't ever want to propose to a girl without my parents having seen her. I believe, I believe it is right, you know, that parents must have an impute into who I marry. And I believe that I need to bring the girl home for my parents to see it, see her, and know what they think. Even if I think I've made up my mind, I felt my mother needed to see her, my parents, my, my sisters needed to see her. So I invited her over and she came over. She spent a night with, with the whole family. My mother got to meet her for the first time, you know, and, and we, we, we talked late into the night under the supervision of mom C because at the point it was getting late and my mother came in and, and told us to go and sleep that this is getting too late. <laughs> so, so, but again, that was when the relationship started getting cordial, you know, and, and from then I, I got to begin to think that it was going to be her. That is so, so powerful. I, I have several points I noted here. You know, Pastor, I don't know if you want to ask any question before I, I get into any of these. Yes, I want to ask. I don't know if there are people watching on Facebook. Um, um, 
I know a number of people tried to join by Zoom. I Again, I want to apologize because my mind was a bit fixated of how we've done it. But I think it is introduced an idea that we can follow through, you know, yeah. going forward. That if you were- Let's Zoom, in and have them mute. Yeah. yeah. Um, so in the future, if you invite you, maybe you have to mute your microphone. But I think if you if for those people, hopefully you were able to reconnect after the glitches and you were not discouraged. Um, just listening to the story. So at the time, Oluchi came to visit you at home. Um, what was on your mind? From what you've said, you are now thinking serious. She's already bulldozed away from five to one, number one. Um, without fighting, no, she didn't do anything. It's just your paper, fighting with your paper and all that stuff. But what I want to ask is that on her own mind, Oluchi, when you made that visit, what was on your mind? Had you seriously also started considering that this could be the, the man that God was sending to your life? Where were you in the process when you came to visit? Mm. Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah. Nothing, nothing yet on my mind. Okay. Um, yeah. Nothing yet on my mind that tends towards marriage, right? Okay. It was just, um, okay, there's an invitation from mm -hmm. someone that I really honor yes. and respect. Okay. Sure. So I need to honor the invitation and go sure. hear him, see his family, see his mm -hmm. siblings, just, mm -hmm. you know, honor and respect. And I just, um, Obey. I just went. I'll follow through. Yeah. I think that's important. Um, before I hand over to you, Pastor Gazi, it's important to know that even at that point, they, did it, they were not on the same page. I mean, in sincerity. No, let, let me come in, Pastor John. I yes. think I, I missed the sequence. Eh? Mm -hmm. I invited her over to my house even before I had started praying about whether she would be a wife or not. It was oh, after really? the discussion on campus, okay. even before youth service. Okay. She came over even before youth service. I think I didn't have more time. Okay, well, I think that I felt I hadn't... I hadn't decided she would be my wife, but okay. I felt I needed to explore the relationship further. Okay. And every okay. girl that came to my mind, I invited them home. I wanted my parents to see them. Oh, so fantastic. Them. Fantastic. So Understood. I, invited, I thought I should explore the relationship more. Okay. Okay. Makes a lot of sense. Okay. So it wasn't the first time she came. You were not sure, but you were exploring. No, no, and, not at all. Not yeah. at all. Not at all. Okay. Pastor Ngozi, over to you, please. I have other questions, but I, I'll flow along. <laughs> Go back a little bit because it, it looks like um because prop do you think it's typical for every young man to kind of like have a couple of names that they're exploring and checking out and wondering who it could be right and for you in particular what were some of the criteria that you were looking at what were some of the things that were on your list that need to be i mean of course it's different for different different young men, but for you, what were some of the things that you were thinking? Because it looked like you took it as a project. It was important to you because you were praying <laughs> about it. Yeah. And you of tell course. us why, you know, why, because not everybody has that orientation, you know, but what were the things that you were looking at as you saw, saw those ladies, you know, that were in church or that, you know, you were in touch with and you like had, I mean, you even had their, their names on paper. Oh my God. I wonder if was listening to their, their name is on someone's paper right now <laughs> on that consideration. <laughs> oh, were you oh, were things that oh, were you what oh, were things that you were looking at? What oh, were you analyzing? It looks like you were as a scientist, you were like you had criteria, you know, you were like an oh, uh, you had some analysis there. What were the things that you were looking looking at and you know why? Yeah, Pastor Ngozi, to be honest, I had dreamt about I, I really had lofty lofty ideas and lofty dreams for my marriage. Um, I, 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 had, I, I, had, I had very lofty ideas for my marriage. I really wanted a peaceful home. I wanted, I had, apparently because I, I grew up from an environment where my, my father, my father always counseled couples. We, we had a lot of troubled couples coming into our home. And my father always had to counsel. So we, I, I saw a lot of stories of failed marriages. I saw a lot of stories of, you know, messed up marriages. And I, I really, look, I, I started reading books about marriage long before I ever found even the first girl on that list. I wanted to know what she'd be, you know. Then also, part of my criteria, I will tell you the funniest of the criteria, Pastor Ngozi. The funniest of the criteria is that, Lord, 
any girl I propose to, and she tells me she wants to pray about it, I will cancel it. Wow. <laughs> why, really? I, why, why I took that position is that I, I made up my mind that I wanted to marry my friend. In other words, before I proposed to a girl, I really wanted the relationship to have gotten to the point where we were friends. And the girl should have no doubt whether what are the intentions of this guy that is coming around me. Then I didn't want any kind of hypocrisy or, or, or all that stuff. I mean, if we have gotten that close and I end up proposing to you, you wouldn't tell me that. It may be, don't, don't mind me, it may, be, it may be a stupid boy's, a stupid boy's mentality, but yeah, this yeah. is the truth. This, this was actually, this was, this was actually what happened. So I said, if we become so close, and I come to propose. And all the time, you're telling me that all the time we'll be coming close. You've not had time to pray. And I'm telling you now, you're playing to, you're trying to play hard to get our cancel it. So it actually happened to one of the people on the list. Uh, once I, I mean, this was actually the closest to me. And I came one day and I said, look, I, this is what I'm thinking. And it says, you need to give me time to pray. But I, I want to pray about it. I just knew in my heart, I'm not going to, I don't know, maybe God somehow, even when we have stupid criteria, God follows us and uses us to, and uses it to help us, you know, so that was how that went. So for her, I also said, look, I told myself, if I make the first step and I hear I want to pray after this long stretch, I'm going to kill it. <laughs> then um, secondly, I wanted a very simple, I wanted, I wanted a simple lady. I, I was looking for the right value system. I wanted, and when I finish my youth service, you're going to give me a good job. I believe you. I have faith in that. But I don't want to, I don't want to make a selection after I've gotten a good job. I want a girl that will accept me. And Pastor Angosi, believe me, if you see me as I was and you accepted me, <laughs> you, won't, you need to see my pictures. I was worse than a, a dried up crayfish. <laughs> there was no comeliness, nothing to desire in me. I was, I was bony. In fact, the first time her mother saw me, her heart sank. She was like, is this the person? You know, it was bad. My situation was bad. So, but I told God, I want my wife to accept me. I, by the time you bless me and I'm making a choice, I probably wouldn't be able to know what is the girl like? And is it me as I am? Or is it what the Lord has blessed me with? And that was my prayer. So I wanted a girl that would just value me and, and just see what was in me and take me the way I was. That was my number one priority. Also, somehow I also, um, but I think that was number one. I just wanted a girl that would take me the way I am and a girl that was simple, not complex, not quarrelsome. And, and that was just it. Found gold. That's 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 um interesting. God extend your expectations. <laughs> that's interesting. I, I think that um <laughs> for those of us, the people the people that are listening and those who probably would listen to this um message uh, in whatever format and um and form it comes to you, um there's some very important lessons from that part of the story that Ihai has just told that I have um, I have come to believe and I've shared on this platform at least once. And I want to reiterate that or, or kind of um, emphasize that, that if Oluchi in seeking to marry a husband, Ihai said he had lofty ideas. He had great dreams about his marriage, but he, even he himself did not represent that future at that time. The dreams he had were ahead of him. It's not as if he was in the dream. In other words, what I'm trying to say is that he didn't have material things. He was not, um, perhaps the way life was playing out for him, he didn't, he, was, he said he was bony, he was dry, you know. So it, it's not, the Ihan you were talking about and the Ihan you're seeing right now, they are not the same person, even though it's the same person. In other words, it was different. So if Oluchi, was thinking, is this the man going to marry me? This bony man, who is going to be feeding him? Look at his bones and all that stuff, or his looks. He could have missed God easily. The reason I emphasize that is because many times people have great dreams and um, they're not able to make a distinction between the now and the future. 
the fact that the man you're looking for is the man you're seeing, but they are just five years ahead of difference. Mm-hmm. The man you're looking at that doesn't have a car, who has come to visit you? You're going back, you're going back on the road with him, and you say, which car brought you? He said, I came by a car. And you remember, I think he wants to marry me, and he didn't come with a car. He wants to marry me, and he's not, he's not even a banker yet. He's just a cop member, a copper, ordinary copper. He wants to marry me, and um, he doesn't have this, he doesn't have that. But the, the challenge with that is that if you're not listening, if you're not sensitive, you can miss God totally. Because that dream you have, that man you're seeing, is that same dream. It's just a question of two, three years, four years, five years. And I'll say this and I'll pause. Why I say this is because this is very important because when we pray or we make choices, if you want to marry a woman that is already made or a man that is already made, there's nothing wrong with that. But you also have to remember that that God helps people to become. So you have to be asking yourself, what am I looking for? What am I looking for? What am I looking for? Um, um, am I looking for the finished product? Am I looking for potential? You know, you know, and those things are extremely, extremely important. It's not just true in marriage, it's also true in all of life. You know, um, and so my main point again is that in my own life journey, I think that I have met quite a few people that might have made the mistake of of um, ignoring the signs that were in front of them because they didn't know that the future will unfold before them. You look you, sometimes people. I've, I've heard stories of people despising people. Say, is that the man that's going to marry? He doesn't have a car. He doesn't have a house. Da, 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 those kind of stuff, right? But the same person they are talking about is that everything they were thinking about then. The person has multiples of them today. You know, because, you know, the person was also evolving, you know, but I, I think um, I'll pause there. Thank you, Pastor Ngozi. Thank you so much, PJ. Um, honestly, I just wanted to ask, while, while, probably while he was, you know, permutating and planning his moves, you as a lady too, you were probably were looking forward to something, you know, and you were contemplating a relationship as well. Um, how did you how did you evolve to a place where you were beginning to think about marriage? What were you looking for? And at what point or what made you think that he could be the one? Because I know that sometimes when a guy is in a position, often spiritual position, it's always easy um, for him to be like on a pedestal. You think he's going to be a perfect guy, like when you see all the ladies, sisters around him and all that. So what was on your mind? What were you looking for? And how did you progress, you know, your thoughts toward marriage? All right. Uh, for me, um, like I said earlier, I had um, I had a um, couple of relationships, okay, that happened before I met him. So with that being, um, you know, uh, a point of um, a yastic kind of thing, you, I could... Um, I could um, filter what I wanted and what I didn't want. So for me, I wanted a man who, um, of course, handsome, good looking. Let's not just, you know, let's not overlook that. <laughs> I wanted someone good looking. All right. And, um, and the value system, the, the things that matter most in life, I, 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 I wanted them reflected in that man. And what are those things? Um, respect. I was looking for someone who could, you know, who could respect me. Okay, who could um, my opinions allow me to express myself, allow me to be natural. I I wanted someone who could um, see me, 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 everything about me. I know what I'm talking about, and um, and say yes. You know, I know all that, and yes, it's still you, because um, you know people say that is uh, it takes a lot to 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 be to fake than it takes to be original. Okay, you you put in so much to be a fake, but if you, if you want to be original, it's quite stressless. You don't put in so much. So I didn't have strength. You know, I didn't have strength to fake anything. I just loved my easy, natural life. And I opened it up and I wanted somebody who could just fall in and we just play and have fun and all that. And of course, 
a, a man who loves God, okay? All the relationships I had, they, they, they loved God, they were believers, but there was this thing, it's a thing, like my daughter would say, it's a thing, you know, there was this thing I was looking for in that knowledge, in that understanding, in that relationship with God that is um, unique, you know? And um, yeah, and I saw it in him. I saw it in him and um, mm, yeah. And then for me also, at what point, having seen all that and also I had my list also, <laughs> I had the things that I wanted and um, having seen those things, I also prayed. I know that he didn't want someone who we say, I want to go and pray. <laughs> I think those people failed the test before because they spoke out. <laughs> so it's not wrong to go pray, all right? It's not wrong to go pray, but that was, yeah, for him it was a fleece or something for him, but I was conversing with the Holy Spirit to say, yes, Lord, all the things that get me excited, I can see it, I can see, but I need you to, you know, go ahead. But for me, it was peace. It was peace. It was peace. When I stay with him, I'm just, it's just like I'm in heaven. Like there was just this serenity. There was just this peace. And then, yes, for me, it was peace. And he, 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 he treats, how can I say? He treat. he knows how to treat a lady very well. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that respect that is paramount to me, he, he really has it. And, um, for me, that was a magnet, yes. That's a clap, a, big... a clap for you, honey, right there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. a clap for him right there. <laughs> and, to do like this. <laughs> before Pastor talks, I want to say, I want to ask a question. There's something that's come up here, um, although you've said it, and I really think it's important because it's something that has also to do with my theology and doctrine and the way I approach life. When you say that you had relationships, you know, and then from there you learned a lot of things, and that that helped you to crystallize more what you wanted mm. and what you did not want. Mm. Um, I know you've asked me some important questions in the past about marriage relationship, and I can now see some of the background. But what what I want to ask is that for single ladies who have who are in the midst of men and relationships, how do you have relationships and keep your sanity and purity? that it doesn't compromise you. Um, how do you handle that? Because that's something that's important to me because I'm not able to, when, if people came to me and said, oh, there are all these options, you know, people coming and going. I don't, I, 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 my challenge is to say, okay, how are you going to design the will of God um, and make sure that you're not compromising the process? Um, by that, what I mean is that to have, to be able to get along with people and yet keep your boundaries. Because in the Western part of the world, people talk about dating, for example, which are not going into that, right? People have a steady relationship. And the difference in this dialogue is that Ihani said something, and, I, and that's very important. He said, I was praying about marriage, not casual friendship. So every time he approached a lady, the end goal was clear. There are people that are in relationship that can go on for seven years. The end goal is not clear. Very dangerous. It's not the same thing. You know, but when a man says, I want to marry, and I'm praying about this. When I'm engaged with a girl, my end goal is clear. If this is not about marriage, I move on. Like when the, when the other lady said, I'm going to pray, he didn't hang around that. He just moved on and said, I just want to marry the right person. So I think, I, don't, I hope my question, is it clear? I hope it's not complex. Mm -hmm. Any so, of you could answer. So what is that? Huh? You know, in other words, what I'm really asking is that, um, before you answer, and maybe Pastor Ngozi can help me more because she knows where I'm coming from. What I'm trying to say is that for the single girl who is mm -hmm. out there that wants to marry and preparing for marriage, how do you go through the process of selection and choosing that is not, it doesn't turn out to be a number of compromises throughout your life that will hurt you in the years to come? Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I think um, first you have to, like you said, you need to know where you're going to. Sure. If you don't know your destination, every way you see is gonna look like it. Sure. So first of all, know where are you going to? So you don't confuse your yourself. So like we said, the destination is marriage. So sure. you don't begin to play around and hang around with people who aren't going towards that direction. 
Maybe they just want to test. They just want to check you out. So for a girl who is um, who wants to, who is in a relationship, it, it, it will do a lot more for you to define where you are going to. It is going to give you um, clarity. It's going yeah. to make you filter the wrong people. When they come your way, you know that this person is not going my direction. Yeah. Because there are a lot of guys, you know, that, um, that, that will just come your way and pin you down for forever. And, you know, when you ask them, it's like, well, let's just, I'm taking you out. You know, they just keep giving you, you know, one thing or the other. And by the time you realize, yes, I've gone. Yeah, so I think one way is to define where you're going to, make it clear. And um, when the people who don't fall into that come along, you'll be able to filter and um, make the right choice. Thank you very much. Pastor goes over to you. Over to you. Obviously, what I'll add to that from what she just said, knowing where you're going for a young lady and for the young man, knowing where you're going. Iha, you said he had lofty dreams about the kind of marriage he wanted. He didn't know who to marry. That no, that who, in a sense, was something he didn't have the right, he had have an answer for, but he had lofty dreams. And it was clear to him that's what he was looking for. How to find it, he had to be praying and then doing the natural permutation and combination. Um, for Ngozi also, for, uh, sorry, for Oluchi in this instance, Oluchi is also saying that if that her own position also is that you have to have a clarity of what you're looking for, where you're going. You don't have all the answers, but you also have to have some boundaries of what you're looking for so that you're not just used in the process. Because you also, even though she, she says, I didn't say to Ihaye, let me go and pray. But of course I was praying in my heart. Mm. But please, over to you, Pastor Ngozi. Thank you guys um, so much again. I just, let me take back to one of the things that Ihaye shared. He said that he, he liked to bring the ladies, friends home, you know, so that his parents could see them, um, his mom give an opinion and all that. So what if, what, in what, what do you think, first of all, is on the, the girl's mind? when you invite her home and secondly or you know i mean in what context is it really a flat relationship is really broad and flat there's nothing special i invite her home what do you think it might be on her mind and the second thing is if your mom didn't like someone or you know was giving you a no-no what would you do if you really felt that that was a girl for you what do you think? To what extent do we um, hold dear what our parents are saying? How should we process that process? Because you know, you might find out that sometimes you bring someone home for one reason or the other, it doesn't just agree with your parents or your mom. You know, it could just be um, stereotype, but, but you feel that that person is wrong. How do you handle that? And we'll, st we'll just start with what do you think, first of all, is on the girl's mind as she's coming to your home to see you? Okay. Um... Nice question, Pastor Ngozi. I think that's a very relevant question. Um, first of all, I think that um, growing up in the in the university, it was quite normal for, for us to to visit each other during the holidays. So you actually had, I mean, especially those of us that lived in the same city, you actually had ourselves visiting each other, we visit the sister, the sister visits. So I don't think anything, anything is in the mind of the sister. I mean, we're all sisters in the fellowship. So it was quite okay to say, come over, meet my sister. And I was, I had a family I was proud of. I loved the value system of my family, you know, and um, I, I, it, it, was, it was quite natural. It was quite normal visiting ourselves during holidays. So I don't think anything was in the mind of anybody. Yeah? I felt it was normal. But the other question is, what will I do if my parents, um, I, I, I never sought my parents' opinion over who to marry. But what I did was to bring everybody I felt I had intentions over to the home. When I finally made a decision, I told my mom, this is the person that I want to marry. She never objected. So I think ultimately, I think the final decision lies with me. 
the man must be able, I really don't think a man should, a man should depend on the parent's choices to decide who to marry. I don't think that is how it should work. I believe a man should make his choice of who he wants to marry, but there is a place of honor and there is a place of, there is a place of what do they think? Supposing at any point in time, my mother or my father opposed my marriage to her, I would have held on a little bit to know why the opposition, I wouldn't discountenance it. I wouldn't say, hey, these old people, they don't understand what is going on. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, in honor, I must, I must pause. You know, there's a saying in my place that says that what the elder sees, standing up or sitting down, that even if the young, even if the small boy jumps a tree or, or dot, he will not see it. So I want to respect the, 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 the wisdom of the parents to say, okay, why are they saying no to this? You know, so, but that never occurred in my case. I think also you attract, like, 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 like my wife said, somehow you were able, I wouldn't, I wouldn't just bring any girl home. You attract, you attract the people, you attract the people that fit into your filter. You do actually. There are certain relationships that wouldn't go, that wouldn't even cross the road, not to talk about coming to your home. So I was proud of the, of the kind of ladies I was relating with. I was proud of them. And I, I was so proud that I could bring them home because I knew their value systems were right. So, I mean, and I, and I felt whoever is marrying me needs to know the family that I'm coming from, needs to know. I had nothing to hide. I was, I was my very humble home, but I, I just said, look, there's nothing to hide here. I mean, person comes home and sees who my family was, but it was not to obtain the approval or the authorization of my parents. That ultimately lied with me, lied with, laid with me. And my parents also, I think I loved their, I loved the way they followed all of us. You know, I think, I think I loved their system of parenting. Nobody, they never interfered. In fact, the one that my mother, there was one that my mother wanted me to marry. She said, um, this one is not too bad. <laughs> but that was all she said. <laughs> that was all she said. She never imposed that on me. And I told her why I wouldn't marry that one. And she said, it's okay. That was just it. You know, so yeah, I, I, had, a, I had a a loving, a loving family that accommodated. And they, they also, maybe, maybe also because they had seen my maturity in Christ, mm -hmm. they trusted my choices. That is another thing. Mm -hmm. You know, when your parents begin to trust your ability to make decisions, they begin to respect your decisions. I think the Lord helped me. I, I drew close to the Lord. When I went into the university, I didn't become rascal. They still saw that I was growing in the faith. They, they, they could see my decisions in the home. I was practically the spiritual leader of the home beside my dad. So they came to a point where they trust, they, they could trust my, when I told them, this is not it, somehow they trusted. They knew this guy hears from the Lord, even though he's a small boy. So they trusted my decision basically. So that was not an issue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, picking up from there, there are a number of things going on. Um, I know our time is fast spent, but we'll try and be rounding up very soon. Before we round up, I think it's good while we're on the air to ask from both of you, um, Ihai and Oluchi, or Oluchi ladies first, Oluchi and Ihai, that obviously we will not be able to cover all the questions in this one setting. So you have to give us the honor of a part two next week, Monday, if it works with your schedule. And um, we can reflect over that. Um, I see that, I don't know whether Oluchi is responding positively or responding, <laughs> I don't know, but it would be nice so that we don't prolong the session because we're, I'm not sure we've gone back past two or three questions on our list. The, um, so reflect over that. The other thing to say, is that um, the last question that Pastor Ngozi posed to Ihaini talks about um, bringing um, people home and all that. I think, you know, when I reflect over that, you know, obviously it's this question to answer. There are a number of things though that are clear. Yes, um, it talks about value system because remember that even though if a man leaves father and mother and is joined to his wife and the two become one flesh, that um, there still is the need for coexistence and relationships that continue throughout life. 
you know. So it will become your brother and sister by marriage. So um, even though the parents will not make the final decision, the ability to get along with that person can make or my marriage, you know, um, sure. can make or my marriage. So it's an important factor that they don't make the decision, but that they are in a line, alignment with the choices that you make because everybody's going to live together eventually, especially yeah. if you come from the certain cultures in the world. We should not transcend God's word, but it's not irrelevant to the ministry of God's word, right? Okay, so that's something that is important. The other point to make is that um, it, it appears that the value system also, Iha has said he was a Christian. It appears as if he was a Christian before he went to college or university. I don't know whether he was converted on campus or whether he was a Christian and then gained admission. And because I know that most times people that became president of fellowship when I was on campus were people that more likely than not entered campus with Christianity because they were, you know, mature. Some people got converted, of course, along the way. But it's important that we see the relevance of his Christian maturity to his decision-making process. The fact that he, had a, he, he trusted God, had a relation with God, and there was a process of decision-making. And also on Oluchi's side, Oluchi also said, you know, there were things she was also praying and looking for certain things. And um, one of the th key things one will be taking away from this session um, is just the fact that they seem to have had a sense of where they wanted to land in life in terms of marriage relationship. They seem to, it wasn't a free fall. It wasn't about I'm just available or, or being desperate where anybody that comes, it doesn't matter what values they wear hoping that some, those things will go away because uh, one of the most important decisions we make in life after the decision of who, of the choice of our faith, of, of, of becoming a Christian or making sure that you have a faith, you know, or making Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, um, the choice of marriage ranks very top on the list, very top on the list because it affects our lives in more ways than we can describe in human words. So I think that for those of us who are listening out there, if you're single and you're thinking about marriage, um, it's a choice you have to make cautiously, carefully, and um, with everything available to you, you have to pray, prayerfully do it. Um, it's also good by yourself, as they have shared with us today, that you have to ask yourself, what do you want out of life? What are your values? What are you looking for? Because marriage doesn't necessarily make you it reveals who you are so you have to make yourself by making choices by yourself you're not hoping to marry somebody and the person will give you happiness the person will give you integrity the person will give you love yes they might love you or they should love you but you have to have happiness you have to be able to know what you want what's your dream what are your aspirations where are you going in life so that you can find somebody that is going along with you because if you don't find somebody in alignment with you, pulling in different directions can lead to a lot of heartaches and headaches and, and can crash and has crashed many, 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 many lives. But indeed, there's so much more to say, but I hand over back to Ngozi, uh, Pastor Ngozi, and then we'll start to say, where do we land for today? Maybe one or two more things before we, we start to pray. Thank you. Okay, I have two more questions, so hopefully we can take them. Before we go, um, one of them was, was, you know, in our times or even in life in general, we talk about falling in love, you know, I'm in love with you and things like that. So would you say in your relationship as you saw the qualities you liked and you were praying, do you think there was a point, a tipping point where you felt I've fallen in love with this person? I mean, love, or was that even a factor at all? Or were the qualities that, you know, you wanted the most primal things? Or was there a point you felt, you know, how did, it, how did it evolve and how did that word even begin to come into features? I'm sure you do say a lot of I love yous. Well, at what point, you know, when does it happen? Is it by the time you've seen the qualities that you like, that you love, or you can be with this person who is, not everything you want, but you still think you're in love with that person. What do you, what's your take on that? Two of you, each person will go. <laughs> Mara, see you. <laughs> Let's start with yeah. us. Yes. Uh, for sure, love is, um, 
love is quite fundamental okay love is fundamental and um and um how do i say um when you say is it is it did it happen when after seeing the values that you wanted or before you see the values that you wanted so for me i think um as we started interacting okay and i saw those things i think i fell in love all right as we started because um, when i hadn't you know had that communication with him you know when he was just there on the stage talking as a president there was no connection right i was just you know sitting there you know but i think um i did when i saw what um, the things on the inside of him and um yeah yeah i did i began to love him you know for for the things that i saw for the things that i saw and also i keep stressing this for for okay for him he said he, he was looking dry he was looking everything we were all young people okay not looking so good all right but for what i saw pastor says something like the picture you want may come in the wrong package all right you just said this is not what i want i want something and god is saying that is it this is it this is the garden just water it just give it time nurture it just allow it to be nurtured you are going to see the picture in your mind. So with all the skinny stuff and everything dry, mm -hmm. I saw everything that I wanted. Mm -hmm. Okay. I awesome. saw everything. I love that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I saw everything that I wanted. And um, you know, in fact, in my mind, even though there was no the, the flesh wasn't much on him. <laughs> <laughs> when he smiles, you know, that smile, you know, it goes somewhere in my heart. And, <laughs> and I could just uh, um, I could just put the I flesh love this story. I put the flesh on the bone. <laughs> <laughs> you know how you use your, how you use your Android phone to do stuff. You begin to do paste, Photoshop, you know, eh? Photoshop Photoshopping and copy. Yeah. So when I when I sleep, I close my eyes. You know, I just do those things. I say, don't worry, they are coming up. Those things. Are <laughs> oh <coming> my God! Up. <laughs> <laughs> so I really did. I really did. Mm. Okay. So yeah, because you can't. Um, Love is fundamental, is, is quite critical. You, it's not just about value, spiritual, no. You have to love what you see. Mm -hmm. You have to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so mm -hmm. for me, Oluchi, that is my story, mm -hmm. my side of story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and her side of story is also similar to mine. I, I think okay. um, it wasn't, it wasn't it, for me, it wasn't love at first sight. I appreciated her person. Um, Stabby was really. Um, I, I, I saw. A lady, I saw a lady of substance. Uh, again, or, or because I already knew, like I kept saying, I already, I, I had lofty ideas, you know. So I, when when we begin to, so both of us are from very humble backgrounds. Maybe that, that could be for the next session. I will let me tell you that there was a time we broke up, our courtship, we broke up, we decided not to marry again. We need Maybe to we'll hear about, that story. We'll talk about <laughs> that next session also. But then I, 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 I saw, uh, for me, the love, my love for her grew. I've heard a lot of stories of people that just went head over heels in love and then began to discover each other. No, for me, my love for her grew as I got to know her. Um, for each moment I met her, I, I began to see, I, I mean, I, you, you, you're just wondering, is this lady really like this? All this while I've known her, how, how come I never discovered this quality, this level of intelligence? You know, so it, it wasn't, it, 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 was, it was discovery, you know, mm -hmm. when, when somebody begins to talk, and you're like, oh, I never knew this lady was like this. I never knew this girl could talk like this. I never knew. Mm -hmm. That was when I began to know that she reads. That was when I began to know that she loves to read. Because the things she was saying, we are, we are, we are beyond her age. It, it, it's only a girl that reads mm -hmm. that could say those things. And I, and I realized, no, there's something inside this girl. And it was, so I saw the virtues that, 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 that I wanted, you know, somebody that you could, I mean, you could, then I saw, I, I, it was easy to trust her. 
it I, I I hated lies and I mean truthfulness was was key to me. You know, I said a simple lady that is not about any pretense. Just show me who you are. You know, I never, I never, I never, I never till today have not heard a single lie. She's never told me anything. I'm, I'm doubting. Is this true? I, 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 I never. You know, so and those were one of the things. Those were one of the problems I saw in the marriages in the local church where I attended. I saw I saw adults breaking up. I saw marriages breaking up. I saw adults fighting in marriages. And I'm like, is this what marriage ought to be? So I saw lies. I saw unfaithfulness. And I just, I, I, I made up my mind. I wanted a girl that is just simple, straightforward, no lies, just say it the way it is. And look, if, if there was any, if there was anybody that had the reason to pretend it was her <laughs> because there were a lot of reasons why why a girl like her should try to hide hide certain things about her but you know the the that truthfulness that sincerity uh, let me know that look it, it's it's not about it's not about our financial status it's not about where we are whatever we put in ourselves when we are able to find ourselves in the right environment, the real us will come out. So I just knew that it's just opportunities of life. If the right opportunity meets this girl, she's the real her will come out. And for me, I just so, love that simple. So my love increased as I saw the qualities. Awesome. Yeah. Excellent. Awesome. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, um, Pastor. Ngozi, I know you said I had two more questions. I don't know if you have asked them. Do we want us to run through our closing thoughts? Because we're going to have part two. Um, yeah. I think, um, is a good place to start to wind up. I have, I'm, I'm also looking at the comments on the Facebook page. I, somebody says, um, the, um, I don't know how, Dalvia Midre says, we should have part two, three to five. <laughs> <laughs> um then let me see marriage so let me see i'll tell them it's every monday so she's not settling for part two alone so let me just warn them ahead of time um and i think um that's an interesting comment there somebody says promise joshua says nice for me to share with very attractive decision or discussion going on here um somebody else um betty says wow ulaku Patience, Ike Wiro says great, and Edith um, says powerful. Edith, thank you for coming back, not being discouraged. You logged in very early before the session and was redirected to Facebook, and you patiently came back and waited. Um, that's commendable virtue. I pray you keep it up, and it helps you throughout your life's journey, and that you use it over and over again to make tremendous progress. Uh, Mary Head in Olabi says, marriage does not necessarily make you, but reveals who you are. That is true, Mary. God bless you. And um, so we have all this interesting comment. Michael Coley says, that's really deep. Thank you for sharing that about your perception of her character. So, um, she doesn't tell us what perception, but I think because of the things you said about, maybe this comment is about how old, about a minute ago. So it must be the fact that she's always told you the truth. She had many reasons why she could have told lies about herself, her person, when you first met but she always told you the truth. And I think we can also understand why from what she has said, she wanted to marry a man that would love her the way she is, not the way she was going to be. So I'm sure that's why she was playing. So she was, as we were testing her, she was also testing, if you don't like me the way you are, go your way, go my way. No you know, so that's understandable. Um, so Davia says it's an inspiring story. We're going to hear more about this story next week. We're going to unpack some more. And next week, there's a question that Oluchi asked me last year when I was visiting in Maputo. A very powerful question. Indeed, very interesting question. I'm not, I'm not going to talk about it today. So if you want to hear it, you have to come back to talk for part two. So Pastor Ngozi, do you have any closing thoughts or do you want me to be winding up here? I think you can wind up because I, I, I have a lot more questions, but they'll take us too far. So there's so many leads they've given, so many interesting um, things they've said, and um, you know, things they've said that have lots of layers that I'm sure will be of benefit to 
you know, our young friends, our single friends, and even to people who are currently married, I think that even the spirit they exude as a couple um, is huge. You know, it's, it's, we're going to, I think we'll love to hear more about what's making your relationship tick. And um, also why, why you are the way you are. And so I'm looking forward to next week, you know, Fantastic. what things you faced, mm -hmm. what, what was easy, what was tough. Okay. And how, what, what would you have to say to um, singles today who are searching or who are trying to make a decision? So I think we'll look forward to addressing some of those next week when we come Fantastic. together. Yeah. yeah. And they haven't told us how long they've been married. Um, they mm -hmm. can keep that to themselves till next week. Um, how long they've been married. And um, they'll tell us about the break in the engagement and how they came back together, why they decided to break. And then we'll, uh, we'll be listening to, I like, I told them, you know, be natural, no preparation, just wear a nice cloth, show up on the screen. They're always nice. You know, so thank you so much. For that. <laughs> All you, thank you so much. We are really excited to have you. And we look forward to next week's session. We will be yeah, we um, advertising it. And um, if you are listening out there on Facebook, thank you for listening. Thank you for participating. And um, this program is 8 p.m. GMT plus one every Monday and Monday next week will be Monday September 21st uh, by God's help God's grace we'll be back online and then feel free to invite friends invite family host a watch party and of course if, listen to it for yourself learn are you single are you married do you have any comments any questions post them send them I look forward to hearing from us I look forward to partnering with us the objective of this program is to help as many single people as possible to be able to marry and marry well to have a marriage that goes the distance a marriage that will last a lifetime that you yourself and your future partner or your current partner will also become counselors to other people and help them enter successfully into the marriage institution we believe that marriage is God's idea and that if we're going to succeed we all have to make adjustments and develop the right kind of values right set of values so thank you so much for this session and i want to say it's our pleasure hosting oluchi and Nihai, and we look forward to next week we'll just take a moment and pray now and then we'll you be... think that Ihai would want to pray for us do i think he wants to pray for us okay i think we can ask him to pray for us even if he's not thinking about it <laughs> <laughs> please go ahead Ihai and oluchi Pray for us as a couple. Pray for just, just pray. Just help us close the great session. Thank you. Okay, so Father, we want to thank you. We give you praise. Thank you for this opportunity to share with the audience. We thank you for Love Works and what Pastor John and Pastor Ngozi are doing together in the lives of people through your grace. We also want to thank you for the privilege we've had to share a little bit of what you have done in our lives and what you're still doing. Father, the most important thing is that we learn and everyone learns and we are able to apply the wisdom that you give to us through this program to find ourselves in the center of your will and following your ordering of our steps in marriage. Father, we pray that Love Works and this ministry and this program and the next programs that will ever come up will be a blessing to the audience, will be a blessing to people. We pray that people will hear something, somebody will hear something that will put them in the right direction. Somebody will hear something that will break a deception of the enemy and put them on the path of wisdom. Somebody will hear something that will make them to change a wrong decision for the right one. Lord, we just pray that these meetings will be vessels in your hand for eternal lasting impact in marriages and in families. We give you praise, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It's Amen. been a pleasure having you, and we look forward to next week. Have a wonderful evening. I know it's very late where you are, but God, yeah. bless, you. God bless you. Very warm regards to your young children, to your family, you. and your friends. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank we appreciate so it. Thank, Thank you. you. God bless you. Bye. Bye. Okay, bye. bye.